this week on OSRL. Jim fixes part of the earthbag dome that a crazy dog destroyed. Mud slinging everywhere from up high to down low. Trying out a new technique for carving pumpkins. And making delicious off-grid food with a quick and easy cinder block rocket stove. Hi y'all, welcome back to the channel. Now if you're new here, my wife and I, we live off-grid here in the Arizona desert. We're building our own house out of earth bags. And right now, we're currently working on the root cellar. Now, if you caught our last episode, you know that I got a lot of cob done in here, but there's a lot more to do. That's what I'm about to do now. I'm about to get in the trenches and get this cob done, or as much as I can. Yuvi, what are you doing? You trying to get in the dome? What can I say? She loves the dome. All right, y'all. So we have a little bit of a problem. This right here used to be the screen for the window for our earth bag dome. I think maybe Peter came home, crew got excited, then Yuvia got excited. She heard all the commotion inside the dome and decided to make her own escape hatch right out through the window. So I'm gonna try to fix this. This will be my first time fixing the screen for a window, so we'll see how it goes. All right, welcome to my workshop, otherwise known as my car. I picked up this kit from the internet. Amazon, let's see what's in there. It's supposed to be a whole screen fixing kit. I'm assuming these are tools. I guess I'll figure out what, the, what they're for. Oh, look, actually comes with a little tape measure. Can always use an extra tape measure. This whole thing was um, $20 or less. So I can't expect these tools to be like top notch tools, but Hopefully at least it'll fix the screen. Oh wow. Little blade. Oh, I think these are the heavy duty tools. I think these are gonna be the important ones. Is it falling apart already? I don't, even, I don't know where this is from. I'll figure that out. And then a whole bunch of screen and instructions. I usually don't read the instructions, but I'm going to give them a whirl this time. Hopefully I'll get a good understanding of how to do this. I've got to come over here to the front of my workshop. And we're going to take out this old spline. I'm guessing this is going to be the easiest part of the whole thing. Now this is extremely dirty because I pulled this out of a house made of dirt. So we'll give this a proper cleaning before putting it back. All right, first step done. Not too bad, not too bad. I got my little spline tool. We're gonna push the screen into the frame. Okay, now I'm gonna use the other side of the spline tool and put this first side of the screen in place. Okay, now we're going to the other side, directly opposite, and we're gonna give a little stretch as we go along. Little lesson learned, be careful where you buy your screen from because I tried pulling this taut and already there's a little bit of a rip in there. Can't really tell, but it's there. Careful what you buy on Amazon, y'all. Well, this is fantastic now that I got that screen fixed. Now it's perfect to let that cool morning air into the dome but now we should be good to go. Super easy to put back in. I think you brought up to me a thing that people were doing with pumpkins, having the chickens help them carve these pumpkins. So I wanted to try it out. So a friend gave us these pumpkins. It's a heirloom pumpkin squash. And I wanted to see if my chickens could carve a pumpkin. They were a little hesitant at first. I don't think they knew what to do with it, but they got the hang of it once you put some uh, some peanut butter and some seeds on there. I think they figured out that uh, it was tasty. Yeah, I don't think they've ever seen a pumpkin before, so they're a little nervous about it. <laughs> yeah, but they really dug in there.
All right, y'all. Well, I'm down in the root cellar. I'm looking to get more cob done. We're going to go over here behind the wall. We got this area over here along this side of the wall. You can still see the lights hitting it. And we got to do all this. All right, while I'm getting the work done over here, I got this wall cobbed up and I'm starting to turn the corner. Very exciting. Good morning, y'all. These mornings are starting to get a little brisk. Eventually soon, they're going to be getting pretty cold. <laughs> but that's all right. Uh, you know, after the hot summer, looking forward to a little cool down. Hopefully it won't be too cold this winter, but we'll see. I'm making a lot of progress on the cob for the root cellar. So I finished up that wall. Now I've rounded that corner. Now there's going to be a lot to do to go all the way around this uh, root cellar wall. But I think it's a good time to do it. Much easier to get materials down there now and uh, a lot less work for later. But I'm eager to get back to building these walls again soon. <laughs> She's like, action. You done? <laughs> All right, let's get let's get serious here. All right, so I got a number of cinder blocks here, and I'm gonna do a project that I've been looking forward to doing for a very long time, which is a rocket stove. Now we already built a rocket mass heater, but this right here is a rocket stove. So I'm just gonna try my hand at something. So I'm just gonna try my hand at something here real quick. Uh, this takes five bricks to make like a two burner rocket stove. So I'm very excited. Jess, you ready? Ready. All right, so I have to cut up one of these bricks. So we're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut up one of these cinder blocks. I'm gonna do that right now. How do you cut a cinder block? We're about to find out. There we go. Okay, we're gonna put our first cinder block down, face up. We're gonna put our cut piece 
right on top of that. One in the front, one in the back. And one again on the top. So now you got your burn chambers right here. And you got your fuel feed here on either side. So pretty simple to put together. Let's see how it works. No shortage of dry grass. Dry grass, which we have no shortage of here, is very flammable. This is some fat wood that we got from one of our neighbors, so we're gonna give this a shot to uh, get things started up here. All right, what do you think? Should I light this thing? Yep. Oh, there we go. That's exactly what we want to see too. I think first successful test run of the quick uh, rocket stove. I think Jess might want to cook up a little something using this. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> Good job. Good job, girl. So we had a nice successful run with the little rocket stove here. And Jess is gonna make some magic with this later. So I'm gonna kind of clean this out and then she'll be able to uh, do her thing. Should be relatively easy to clean out, I think. Okay. And we're ready to go for another burn. No crying. Is this just to get rid of all the old vegetables? Yes. That's what soup is for. All right, so while Jess is preparing the soup, I'm gonna get this fire going. I've already kind of loaded it up with a bunch of materials. Now I'm gonna get some, uh, some kindling. I got some paper here. Put in some of this dry grass. <laughs> that went up quick. You ready to start cooking? All 
All right, well, we'll see how this goes. How long does it take to cook? About an hour. All right, well, let's see how, let's see how it does. Boiling. It is. All right, are we all done? What do you think? How's it looking? It's good. It smells good too. Mm -mm -mm. I'll get the door for you. All right, here's the taste test. They're delicious. All right, well, I'm eager to try it. Still hot. <laughs> Still burning. So just letting it cool down. But yeah, how very cool. Like how long did that take me to set up? A few minutes. A few minutes. Well, the fifth cinder block is optional. You could do, you could get away with four. But uh, if you get the extra cinder block, make the extra cuts, then you can have a two burner rocket stove. But uh, we just use the one I just used uh, scrap wood for the fire, just some uh, old two by fours that really got things going. And it worked out really well. First rocket stove success. I think I might build some other rocket stoves. Uh, eventually I wanna build a pizza oven, that'd be cool. And uh, we can have a lot of outdoor cooking things. I don't know, do you think you would ever use it? Yeah, I'm pretty excited about this because well, it's inexpensive, right? Just a few dollars for the cinder blocks. And really quick to put together. Didn't take too much fuel, just what we had around here, some sticks and scrap wood. Dry grass, plenty of that. And it worked great. I mean, we're getting into the fall, temperatures are starting to cool down, but it was still kind of warm today, so it was nice using it so it didn't heat up the inside. And I think it would be good for summer cooking. And it would still be good for winter cooking too because then we don't have to use the propane or you know other fuels. Just scrap wood. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny uh, putting this thing together. This is a rocket stove. And I think there was a lot of confusion back when I was building the rocket mass heater. Two different things. You know, the rocket mass heater is for heating up all that soil and keeping the dome warm. This is for cooking, so that's the main difference. Rocket mass heater, rocket stove. And I'm happy with the progress I'm making on the root cellar, and it's a big help having all that dirt down there. So a lot of stuff in this video. Give a big thumbs up for uh, rocket stoves or for chicken pumpkin carving. <laughs> all right, and we'll catch you on the next video, y'all. Bye.